What's going on guys? Welcome back to the homestead. Welcome back. Well, it is a beautiful day finally here in Florida. The rain has stopped, the skies are clear, and it's about 68 degrees here today. It is a beautiful day to be working outside. So today we're going to get out here and go ahead and frame up the walls for the pantry and the outdoor cooler and try to go ahead and get the siding on here. But that way I can go ahead and get the dryer and the washer installed for the Country Boy laundry mat along this wall right here. I could go ahead and install the washer and dryer, but then I'd have to move it all when I was ready to do the wall. So I already have the material, so why not go ahead and frame this out? And honestly, I'm kind of curious to see what the layout's going to look like once all the studs get up. So that's what we're going to start with this morning. I'm going to bring you guys along with me. I'm excited. This weekend started my spring break from work. So I actually got the whole week to be able to get some stuff done. And as long as Mother Nature cuts me a little bit of a break, we're going to get it done. I just got through watching Lessons at the Ridge with Tim all over there at Ridge Life. If you haven't checked him out, I'll put his card right there. Great channel, great man. And every Sunday he does the Lessons from the Ridge because a lot of people can't go to church because of uh, what's going on right now. We all know I ain't going to say it here on the channel. But I try to catch that whenever I can. I, but I came out here this morning and finished putting the foam and the subfloor down. If you haven't seen the foam and the subfloor yet, go ahead and check out my running the wire for the uh, outdoor kitchen. And uh, I installed the first half there and now to show you how to do it and why I did it. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this thing started because daylight is burning. Come on, it's going to be a great day. Well, that was easy breezy lemon squeezy come on we got the first wall up the wall that we started whenever we did the electric wasn't too bad a little pro tip here if you're working by yourself make sure that your cuts are tight that way you don't have to sit there and hold everything because a lot of times you don't have enough hands go ahead and make your cuts tight that way you can wedge it in there and it'll kind of hold its place whenever you're working by yourself let's go ahead and start on this back wall we'll get that knocked out real quick and then we'll cut around the other wall and then we'll go ahead and lay out exactly where the walk-in cooler is going to be and put the wall there and frame out for the door come on we making progress today beautiful day Now I know guys, I know, some of y'all are probably saying, why don't you just build the wall on the ground and stand it up? Well, the problem with that is, is when I built these lean-tos, I never really had the intentions of closing it in. So nothing is exactly square or level on these lean-tos. So I'm having to kind of cut and compensate for that as I'm framing out these walls to make sure that everything is straight. That way, whenever I start putting the drywall up or siding or whatever I'm doing, it'll actually work out better for that. So that's why I'm not building it on the ground. It's easier for me to just go ahead and build it in the air like it is. And that way I can kind of tweak things back and forth to make sure that whenever I'm putting my siding on, everything lines up on the seams like it's supposed to. Just so you know, because I know somebody's going to catch that. Come on. Another good tip is whenever you're laying everything out and you're putting your measurements down, make sure that you put your measurements right there where they're going to go whenever you put your crow's foot there. 
because you never know if you're going to get a phone call, a saw is going to break, or you're going to get interrupted and then you forget your measurements. If you go ahead and write your measurements right there where it's going to be, all of this is going to be covered up anyways. That way you don't end up cutting something wrong because the way wood prices are right now and any kind of building material right now, you definitely want to measure twice and cut once because you can't afford to mess up. If you mess up on a two by four right now, that's about a $10 hit with the way prices are right now. It's freaking ridiculous. So go ahead and take the extra time. Go ahead and write your measurements. That way, if anything happens, you don't get lost in what you're doing and you can always just look back up there and refer to it. I hope that tip helps. We're gonna keep going. Come on, we're making progress. Yeah, baby. framed up now as we got to do is put this wall right here in the center and frame out the door for the cooler the cool bot says to do about a room that's about eight by eight this is only about six and a half foot wide so we're going to do it eight by six and a half foot it'll just make it where the air conditioner doesn't have to work so hard to keep this room cool enough to be able to hang the meat i'm okay with that that's plenty of room for me it's just me out here on the homestead i don't have a big family of eight or anything like that so all we got left to do is do that, but it's getting late in the day. I ended up having to run back up to Home Depot and get 30 more 2x4s, non-pressure treated. Cost me $210, about $8 a piece, when they used to be about $3.98 a piece. So, uh, yeah, that hurt my feelings, but it is what it is. We got to get it done. So I'm probably going to go ahead and stop for today, and in the morning we'll come back out here, frame up this wall, and then we'll go ahead and start putting the siding on. And that way I can start working on that country boy laundry mat because I need some clothes. Speaking of clothes, check out this shirt I got. Old Bonded Oaks Acres right here. Y'all go check him out. He's a real good dude. Sent me this shirt. He's got some cool stuff going on there in Texas. Can't go wrong with Texas. He's a good old boy, even though he does like Chevys. But I ain't going to hold that against him. He's still a good guy in my book. But I'm going to go ahead and get these animals fed because some ghosts back there are hollering at me right now. And then I'll cut back in in the morning and we'll keep this thing going. So come on! Well, good morning, guys. It's the next morning. We're going to go ahead and start on this wall right here that's going to separate the cooler from the pantry. But as you can see, it's not that wide of a space. So it's kind of just a little small wall. I'm going to end up putting the door over here on this side and make it to where it swings out up against this wall inside the pantry right here because I don't want to take up more room in the cooler because I couldn't quite get eight foot wide. So I want as much space as possible in the cooler and the pantry doesn't need to be that big because I can always add another pantry on the inside of the outdoor kitchen. So let's go ahead and get started and get productive today. Come on. All right, guys, now that we're done with the framing, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'll do a little walk around with you and kind of let you know how big the walk-in cooler is going to end up being and how big the pantry is going to be. All right, well, right here's the pantry section. And it ended up being five foot five by six foot four, which is a pretty decent little size pantry. And then the walk-in cooler here. And this section right here is the walk-in cooler. And it ended up being 5 foot 10 by 6 foot 10. And that's after you put the 4 inches of foam on all of the walls. That will be your overall measurement at the end. So not quite as big as I wanted it to be, but definitely big enough. I was going to make the cooler part a little bit bigger. But I decided that I wanted the pantry to be just a little bit bigger so I could add some shelving, especially being that the door is going to swing out like that here in the pantry. And then right here is where I'm going to cut the door into the outdoor kitchen. I'm actually going to do a barn style door on the inside so it won't fold in or out. That should save a little bit of space for me. 
But now we're going to go ahead and put the metal siding on. That way I can go ahead and get it wired up for the washing machine and dryer on the outside part. Let's go ahead and get it. Making progress today. It's looking good. Now before we get started, I want to go ahead and show you something. When you're working by yourself, sometimes you got to get creative. These are some pretty long sheets of deck. I do have a little lip at the bottom where I can set it on to get the first one started. But on the ends here, it'll be impossible for me to know exactly whenever I'm lined up on the end. And I'm going to have to be more towards the center in order to hold it up to get that first screw in. So what I did here is took a 2x4, screwed it to the end right here, left it over hanging about that much. That way, whenever I pick the deck up, I can slide it all the way to it. And then I know that that end is exactly flush with the end of that wall. Then I can put a screw in the middle and then start working my way down it with the screws. Got to get creative whenever you're a one man army. Come on. Wall down, come on. All right guys, well we got two of the three sides sheeted in, except for the top part right there where it needs to be uh, cut in. I'm not quite ready to do that yet, but I'm gonna add some corner trim right there whenever I cut all of this in. The main thing I needed to get done for the next phase of my project is getting this wall up right here, which is good now. That's where the washer and dryer is gonna go. So I got it to that point. We're not closing off the other end where the electric box is because I still have to cut the door in between the outdoor kitchen and the pantry. And I don't want to close that all in because then I'll have to cut it from the inside and I want to cut it from the pantry side. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. It's been a two day project. We've made some pretty good progress. Got all the framing done. Got two sides of the sheeting done. And now I can work on the country boy kitchen and get some clothes washed. Come on. But I hear the goats in the background, they're hollering. It's about 3, 30, 4 o'clock. It's about time for me to go ahead and feed them. So until we see each other again, guys, come on. Let's go homesteading.